Welcome back to Dr. O'Donovan, Medicine Made Easy. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the CA199 blood test, which is also known as the Cancer Antigen 199 test. We're going to discuss what it is, how it's used, and when it's requested, as well as what the result might mean. But before we get into the main section of the video, please do subscribe to the channel for weekly medical education videos if you haven't done so already. So let's start off this video by exploring what CA199 is. Well, to refer to it by its full name, Cancer Antigen 199, it's a protein that exists on the surface of certain cells. Now, CA199 doesn't cause cancer, but it's a protein that can be produced by certain tumor cells, which therefore makes it useful as a tumor marker to follow the course of the cancer. Now, CA199 is elevated in most patients with advanced pancreatic cancer, and this is the cancer that it's most associated with. But it may also be elevated in other cancers and diseases, such as bowel cancer, lung cancer, and gallbladder cancer, as well as in benign, also known as non-cancerous diseases, such as gallstones, pancreatitis, cystic fibrosis, and liver disease. Because elevated levels of CA199 are seen in many diseases, elevated levels do not necessarily mean the presence of pancreatic cancer, but we should remain vigilant for it. So how is it used? Well, the most common use of CA199 is as a tumour marker. In this way, there are three main uses. These are firstly to help tell the difference between cancer of the pancreas and bile ducts and other non-cancerous conditions such as pancreatitis. Secondly, to monitor a patient's response to pancreatic cancer treatment. And thirdly, and finally, to look for pancreatic cancer recurrence. So that brings us on nicely to when it's requested. Well, because of its role in pancreatic cancer detection, CA199 may be requested along with other tests such as CEA, bilirubin and or liver function tests when a patient has symptoms that may indicate pancreatic cancer. Now, I've made a separate video on pancreatic cancer symptoms and signs, which you can check out by clicking on the link that is appearing on screen here. But these are things such as weight loss and persistent jaundice. Now, if CA99 is initially elevated in pancreatic cancer, then it may be requested to monitor response to treatment. And this brings us on to what could the result potentially mean? So in general terms, small increases in CA99 can be detected in some healthy people, as well as people who have benign conditions that affect the liver or pancreas. These typically cause a small temporary rise in CA99. Now moderate to high levels are often found in pancreatic cancer, as well as some other cancers. The highest levels of CA99 are seen in a condition called excretory ductal pancreatic cancer. This is a cancer that is found in the pancreas tissues, and this is the tissue that produces the food digesting enzymes, as well as in the ducts that carry those enzymes into the small intestine. Now this tissue is where 95% of pancreatic cancers are found. Repeated or serial measurements of CA99 may be useful during and following treatment for pancreatic cancer, because rising or falling levels may give your doctor important information about whether the treatment is working, as well as whether all of the cancer was removed successfully, for example, during a surgical procedure, as well as whether the cancer could be returning. Now, it's really important to know that here in the UK, CA99 is not recommended as a screening test for people who do not have symptoms of pancreatic cancer. This is because, as we've already discussed, there are many other conditions that could cause potential CA99 to rise. Now, I hope you found the video helpful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment in the comments section below. For more information, please see the description box of the video. I've included some useful extra reading there. Please also remember that this is a medical education video, not a clinical advice platform. Content provided by YouTube is for general information purposes only, and these information videos are not produced to provide individualized medical advice. If you do have health concerns or worries about your blood tests, then please consult your own doctor. Thanks for watching, and until next time, bye.